This morning, former President Trump one step closer to securing the Republican nomination following his double digit victory in South Carolina. Wow, that is really something. This was a little sooner than we anticipated. It was. The former president defeated his one time U.N. ambassador, Nikki Haley, in her home state, never mentioning Haley by name in his victory speech. Instead, focusing on his potential rematch with President Biden. We're going to look at Joe Biden and we're going to look him right in the eye. He's destroying our country and we're going to say, Joe, you're fired. Haley campaigning in Michigan ahead of tomorrow's primary is vowing to fight on. Her campaign claiming it raised a million dollars since polls closed in South Carolina. Don't complain about what happens in a general election if you don't vote in this primary. On Saturday, explaining why she's staying in the race for the long haul. I'm not giving up this fight when a majority of Americans disapprove of both Donald Trump and Joe Biden. While the Trump campaign attempts to shift its attention to November, Mr. Trump is facing a fierce backlash over his remarks to a group of black conservatives last Friday, saying his four criminal cases appeal to black voters. And then I got indicted a second time and a third time and a fourth time. And a lot of people said, that that's why the black people like me, because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against. Later, invoking his mugshot taken after his arrest in Georgia. You know who embraced it more than anybody else? The black population. It's incredible. You see black people walking around with my mugshot. You know, they do shirts and they sell them for $19 a piece. Haley says the former president's remarks are more evidence he cannot win a general election. It's disgusting. That's the chaos that comes with Donald Trump. That's the offensiveness that's going to happen every day between now and the general election. And just this morning, Donald Trump's consolidation of control over the Republican Party continues with RNC chairwoman Ronna McDaniel announcing she's resigning effective next week. That's when the party is expected to install a new slate of leaders, all handpicked by Mr. Trump, including his daughter-in-law as the party's co-chair. Savannah. All right, Garrett, thank you. Let's turn to NBC's Kristen Welker, moderator of Meet the Press. Hi, Kristen. Good morning. We just heard Nikki Haley saying she'll stay in the race. Usually a presidential campaign runs out of money, and that's how it, it gets, it gets uh, out of the race. Does she have the resources to go forward, and what would the path to victory look like? Well, Savannah, right now she says she still does have the resources to move forward. As Garrett just said, she's raised a million dollars, according to her campaign, since South Carolina. But some major donors have begun to pull out, including the Koch brothers. But look, her path, Savannah, is narrow at best. Her campaign argues, look, there are a number of open primary states, including Michigan, on Tuesday that are going to vote, meaning the Democrats and independents can vote in those primaries, 11 of the 16 states that vote on Super Tuesday or open or semi-open primary states. But look, this is a Republican primary. So in order to win, she's got to start winning over more Republican voters. And Savannah, even if she picks off one or a few of those states, it's hard to see her catching up with Donald Trump when it comes to the delegate count. Now, in terms of Trump, we've been talking to aides and allies of the former president who say, look, after South Carolina, it is time for him to start focusing on a more general election message, focus less on personal grievances and more on the issues. Because, of course, in a primary, talking about his personal grievances has really energized the base, but his allies are concerned that could turn off moderates, could turn off independents. And as Garrett noted, he didn't mention Nikki Haley's name in his speech on Saturday night. That was really notable. Will he listen? He's an unconventional candidate. I wouldn't hold your breath. We'll have to see what happens. Okay. And then to to Washington. Here we go again. A potential government shutdown just days away. How's this going to play out? Well, I've been talking to sources on both sides of the aisle, Savannah, who say with each passing day, a partial government shutdown becomes increasingly likely. That would mean thousands of government workers wouldn't get paid. Some critical food aid services uh, could be halted, and it could even lead to some travel delays. The president has called all four congressional leaders to the White House on Tuesday. Still a lot of sticking points. And here's the rub. The Republican House Speaker, Mike Johnson, is proposing a potential short-term plan. He'd have to work with Democrats, though, Savannah, at this point to get that done. Let's remember that former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy worked with Democrats to try to avert a government shutdown, and that's how he lost his job, Savannah. All we'll right. see how it plays Kristen out. Kristen Welker, thank you very much.
Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.